Hey guys, Jason Scolari with Modern Rotting Magazine, and in front of us is our 55 wagon. We've already done some things to it, uh, spare tire delete, tailgate, a uh, little bit of rust repairs in the rear, but now we're ready to kind of do the heavy lifting. Um, the whole roof is pretty much rot out, at least all the pillars are, and some of the top rear back there. So we brought Kev Elliott in, good buddy of mine, known him for a long time. He's a real, really good fabricator, um, and he's gonna help do the heavy lifting, and uh, well, where do we start? Well, we start by the new roof. Where's the new roof? Well, the new roof's sitting like? over there. I, I went up north and picked that baby up. Um, it almost looks like the one we're taking off. Which is good, because we're trying to keep the patina. Absolutely, but without the rot. So there's a few dents in there that I know you can bang out no problem. Outside the dents, we've got a pretty solid roof. And uh, yeah, so we got that. But where do we start before we cut this one off? Well, if we make all the cuts on the pillars, pretty much all the worms are going to be hidden. Mm -hmm. So the patina's going to stay, so that's yeah. good. But we're going to start by bracing this baby up because it's pretty rotten in the top and it's going to move a lot when, sure. we, when we cut the roof off. So we're going to put some bracing in the window aperture here. We're going to put some in the rear side windows and across the back and a couple of X's across the body so it can't bend this way or this way yeah. when we cut the roof off. So when you say something through here, you're going to weld it down here but not on here. We're, going to, we're going to weld bracing to the body but when it comes to the top it's just going to be sitting in this angle here yeah. so when we put the new roof on, if it, when it, it sits in that angle, it lines up. Okay, got course, it. We got to make so the bracing can't move, so it's in the right place. Sure, sure. All right. Well, so that sounds sounds like today's a lot of just really bracing it up to get ready to cut the roof. A lot off. of bracing, but that's the most important part. All right. Well, I guess we start cutting and welding. Cut metal and welding. Yep. So as you can see, this bracing doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be strong. As Kev got closer to look at that B pillar, where we were gonna cut it off is all rotted out, so we're gonna have to cut it lower. Another piece across here, and then another one from here to the front. And that'll stop any forward to back movement. Made a mistake, I'll admit it. With these on the outside, the roof's got to slide down onto it like this, and it can't slide at an angle if we're going to drop the pillars down. So we need to put it on the inside so it can drop down and sit on it like this, straight down. So we're going to cut these three top pieces off and we'll weld them back on underneath. So that's our frame finished, and it looks a bit overkill, but it does two jobs. One, it's welded to every pillar, so the pillars won't move, and secondly, it's got these saddles, so the roof is sitting on there, sitting on here, so when we put the new roof on, we know we've got the exact right height, so we can get the pillars cut in the right place. So it's doing two jobs. So now the frame's done, we can start to cut the roof off. Um, I'm going to try and save as much of the inner structure as I can. Right, it's coming off. What happens when you used to work on your own? I'm locating the spot welds that hold the outer post to the inner structure and then drilling out the spot welds so I can reuse these holes to weld the new roof on. But I can't see where they are, so I'm drilling the first two where I can see them. And then I'm using this chisel to, to split the panels apart and when it stops, that's where the next weld is. We're going to remove this, we've still got the rear section of the roof to drip right on here and take this off and then we're going to unpick the top of this pillar, same as we did with the B pillar. Um, there's a 
There's a nice joint under here where spot welds going upwards so we could use the inner structure of this pillar and use the factory weld positions to hold that in place, but we're going to have to take the outer skin off so we can replace the strengthening inside the pillar. We can't just cut through the pillar and weld it on to the butt weld. There's no strength in there. So we've got all the pillars ready for the, the roof swap, except for this one. This is the last pillar. Um, the front pillars on these have got lead on the join between the pillar and the roof, so my first job is to get that lead out. Um, I don't want to breathe it in by grinding it off, so I'm going to use a blowtorch and, and melt it out. Then we're going to pull the outside skin off, and then we're going to cut the top of the post off. What I'm doing here is just masking up the backside of where I'm going to be welding because we're going to paint some Pour 15 inside all these pillars because they're so rusty. Um, and I don't want Pour 15 where I'm going to be welding. I want a metal on metal contact. So the next job now is to trim these pillars opposite to what I've done on the car so that they mesh together. So let's hope I get it right. The one thing we haven't shown is how to, how to transfer the cuts from the car to the new roof. Um, and you can measure, but I like to make templates as well to be double sure. So I've already made this one, so it's there. And if we transfer that to the other roof, we we'll bring it over to the, to the new roof, and that fits in there, so now we can mark it here. And I've still got to take this stainless trim off, and then I'll measure from this edge to the cut on the other one. I'll know exactly where to start and exactly where to finish. And then we're going to weld it underneath this trim so you won't see the weld. So that's one way. The second way, which I'm going to do here, instead of making a template, I've just trimmed the top of the passenger side rear pillar. So we just put this in place here and I've left this here so I can locate it on the bump that's underneath the stainless trim. So I know that's going to be there. So I know exactly where to cut this one. So we've got all the pillars trimmed now. It's all ready to go on. Um, but before we put it on, I'm just going to paint some Pour 15 around the edges because it's easier to do while the roof's upside down than it is on your back. So let's get that done, let it dry, and we'll get it on the car. As soon as we've got this snap track crane in the tech center, it's a lot easier to lift the roof up with this than it is to get four guys, because it's gonna probably go on and off two, three, four times, because I've trimmed all the pillars just slightly too long. Because if you trim too much, you're gonna have a gap. So it's gonna have to go up and down to trim it. So this makes it a lot easier. But I thought I was going to have to take it on and off a couple of times. But I guess my measurements and my patterns were better than I thought, because I can work around it and trim it in place. So I guess now we take the straps off. Then I'm going to leave it straight, I guess. So as you saw, we got the roof on. Almost fitted, not quite. It needed to go back and down slightly. And it wasn't going down easily, so I've used ratchet straps from the framework at the back around the top of the A-posts. These clamps are just here to stop the, the strap coming down. Now this is all in line, perfect. When we pulled it back, it kind of went up a little bit. So I've got another strap over the roof. Wrenches here are here to stop the, the, the rain gutter pulling in with the strap. That's pulling it down, so now I've got it down in the right place. It's clamped in place ready for welding. Bringing it back or down means this lines up now. It's not clamped here, but it will be. A little bit of a wide gap here, but this is in line. This, this return here is slightly wider than, than the one on the car. Why, I don't know. So once this is tack welded here, I'll trim the back edge off that lip, and I could clamp that in place, and then this will line up. Once again, bringing it back and down. This is all in line now. This doesn't line up with this. Although this lines up and this lines up, so I'll get this welded. Just 
strapped it both sides, back side and the side, so the whole thing went back. And now this is all in line, I can weld this up, and then I can put the outer piece of the... So now we've welded all the outside up on all the pillars, and welded the inside on the front and the back. I'm just going to weld the inside of the B-post, we've already plug welded the outside and up, up in the top here. So three welds each side, and that's the end of it. So that wraps up the welding. The new roof's on there. It doesn't look much different than it did when we started, but it's a lot stronger than the old one. It was really rusty up inside and in the pillars, especially the rear. The front was bad. So it looks pretty much the same as it did, but it's a lot stronger. Um, it was pretty easy to fit thanks to the structure, which may look like overkill, but when Jason cut this roof off another wagon in the junkyard, literally the beat post fell down and the doors fell off because the roof is a lot of the structure on the car. So it, it was bad. So this fixture helped us out a lot um, because we didn't have to do any measuring. Once we lowered it down onto the fixture where it sits on these saddles here and the same in the rear side windows and the tailgate, that was it. It was in place, as you can tell by the door gap. So that's about it. We just got to fix some dents in the roof and uh, cut out the fixture and this thing's ready to go. So we just finished the roof swap on the 55 wagon. Um, and I just want to show you a few tools from Harbour Freight that came in useful. This battery powered cutoff wheel is really handy for getting in tight spots, way better than an electric one with a cord. It's a, it's a pretty useful tool. The little chief die grinder, you can put various, you can put a die grinding bit in it, or I used to use these drum sanders in there. Uh, that was useful for doing the curved sections under the mouldings. And then you can use a great big electric grinder. I mean, it's useful, but this little chief grinder makes tight spaces much more accessible. So these three tools are really useful. They're all from Harbour Freight, e even this. And if you want to see more about the project, go to modernrolling.com.